Um, it changes completely. I've lost everything. I've lost power, I've lost things, I've lost uh, my people and my stability. So I, um, I, um, when, when, when season one picks up, I uh, am uh, a, 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 not a drunkard, but uh, certainly a, uh, a bit of a, line, a liner in a, in a traveling carnival of sorts, fighting for coin in a... Couple of them are in different places. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's how it changes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like they were they call it a whole house. I don't call it a whole house. This is in the script. It's like a, a brothel. It's a brothel. But it's, it's kind of yes, the, the place where the ladies of the night reside. <laughs> Um, they want to call you the villain of the show. I personally think you're the most interesting character on the show. And I would like to see, like, is Monroe going to maybe develop into more of like an anti-hero, maybe? Um, I hope so. I mean, I, yeah. think, like, I mean, in his mind, he's kind of the hero of the story. I'd love to see that. Any, any character in it. Right. Is, and that's the only way you can play any character. You have to, yeah, but, um, I think that, like, um, yeah, I, I, I would love to see... I, I think that he was alone at the top of the hill um, for, for, for the first season and didn't necessarily want to be there. Um, but was holding that tiger by the tail, scared that it was going to turn around eating him, and was just holding off the line and destroying everyone and everything around him in order to, 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 to hold on. Now he's lost that, he doesn't need that, and I think that I, I think that. that Everyone in this show seems to be obsessed with power. I don't think he is. I think he's obsessed with the yearning for family, for love, and for the need to be to be protected. Um, and, and I think that uh, he's had three months since since the nuclear fallout, um, and that's a, that's a lot of time to reflect on what it is that you've done for the last 15 minutes. And uh, so I don't know where they're going to take it. But I just hope that they uh, start to move away from it. We know that he can be psycho, but maybe he can be something else. But there's more to him. I think they built it that way. So yeah. I think it's there. It's yeah, there. there. I think that there's an, uh, he has a, a sort of uh, an emotionality which is pretty exposed. And I think that in three months that might drop a little bit and maybe we can start to see a little bit more humanity. I'm hoping. I have no idea. My um, breaking Monroe's heart. Yeah. Um, do you think that they ever that he'll ever give up on Miles, or will they? Will he always hold out hope that they can be that brother relationship again? I'm, I'm, it's interesting that you say that. I think that um, giving up on Miles, I think that he, he might give up on what his beef is. And that is, explain to me why you destroyed me. Explain to me why, explain to him, explain to me why you tore us apart and therefore my only reference to family in the world. And we still haven't heard that explanation, but I don't think that he would be looking for that anymore because we had an exchange in, in episode 20 where he turns around and says, the stuff you did was just so abhorrent that I had to leave. And there's, a, there's an aspect of that. I think there is enough sanity in, in, in Monroe to understand, like, yeah, I killed women and children in the name of protection for, for like, I went too far. I said, oh, the guy went too far. Um, so I think that that's, there is, I think he still holds a deep, deep um, affection for, for Miles and for what they had as a brother. But um, I think that the, the nature of that relationship will change the next time they meet, if they do meet, and I'm sure that they probably will. Do you ever judge uh, uh, the character because of what he's done? You try not to. You try desperately not to. But he, um, I reckon he's been really kind um, with him in that it feels like when he does something, there is a very strong emotional tethering to the purpose. It's completely... Um, it's completely uh, flawed, the purpose and the logic, but it's still there. So yeah, judge it. 
absolutely, as, as anyone would, but when you're in it, you can't. You just have to try desperately to understand why you, you would do that. And, you know, and, and, and the, the one thing that allows me to tell that I keep finding with him is that it's all about love. It's all about the loss of, and not love, not in a sexual sense, not in it. It's like family. It's losing everything, and but having it still there in your grasp. So I'm like, why can't I? What, what, what happened? Did you know that from the first episode or is this something you discovered about Yeah, no, I don't know. I knew, I knew that they were in a car together and they had a 20 second scene and then I get a, this, a letter at the end of the episode. And that's all I knew. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I spoke to Kripke and he said, oh, you know, there's a relationship there. I, I kind of thought, wouldn't it be interesting if there is something, the relationship is so deep that that's what drove him to insanity. And I think that what they started, was it was a symbiotic aspect to it. Is that I think what I was doing, what they were writing, it started to become like, oh, it's actually much more about Miles than it is about power. I never really bought the concept that Monroe wants all the power. He's just not strong enough. He's, he's not... The way that he holds himself, the way that he carries himself, the, 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 the decisions that he makes aren't those of a man that wants power for power's sake. It's, it's, it's a, something a lot more uh, darker and nasty. Well, not nasty, but certainly much more emotional. Well, there's a scene where Tom talks to your character and he says, you have a borderline erotic fixation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, yeah. Some people are saying, whoa, well, like these guys, like, there's something else going on there, but I mean... And how do you know? But I think... Look, no, that's ne never how I've played it. And nor do I think it's, it's there in a sexual sense. I, I think that... I get why people say that. And people, people often... Guys, we have to wrap up the press room. They I'm get sorry. me weirdly um, uh, kind of put off by two men that love each other. And, and I'm talking about you know, the way family loves each other, the way brothers love each other, the way I love my best mates. You know? And it, it, it is, is a connection that, that, that uh, it kind of belittles it to bring it into sexuality, in, into the realm of whether it be straight or gay or you know, whatever. It kind of belittles that. It's got nothing to do with that between those two. But for someone like Neville, First of all, who wants to get in and who hurt him? Because to say to someone who's, who's that emotionally invested in someone else, like, oh, it's for this reason, because you want to have sex with him, or you want to, it's that, it's like, you don't understand. Yeah. And he probably, I mean, he probably, maybe he believes it, maybe he doesn't. Either way, it riles my mind. Like, no one understands the depth of what he's feeling, what he is feeling. Because it's nothing to do with sex, it's to do with just extreme hurt. It makes for a really entertaining subtext and it's the best relationship in the show. So oh, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thanks so much. Well, they haven't told you about the, how the pilots are doing then. They're here too. Uh, Billy, you guys are in bed. Yeah, you guys wake up in bed together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well the thing is, <laughs> he wakes up and I'm just staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> Twirling my muscles. <laughs> yeah.